All right, well, as I mentioned uh, over there in the monologue, where the laughs were flying, Max. <laughs> Mama got killed. <laughs> Jerry Wine. Uh, the Oscars are this Sunday. Everybody's wondering who's going to win. People get Oscar fever this time of year. They have, go to parties. They talk about it incessantly. So I thought, what better time to look at some of the nominees with a special Oscar edition of Conan on the Isle. <laughs> All right, folks, our first nominee is Girl with a Pearl Earring. It's a beautiful movie about the great painter Vermeer's relationship with one of his models, and it's up for three Oscars. Now, obviously, the film's producers weren't able to use real Vermeer paintings. They weren't available, but I'm afraid the solution they came up with wasn't that great. They went a different way. Take a look at a clip. I thought this hurt the movie. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. She'll find out. This has to be Greek. See if you saw. He looked inside me. just sort of took me out of the movie for a second. <laughs> Other than that, great film. Great film. All right. I gotta get me that painting. Our next, our next nominee is Seabiscuit. The true life horse racing epic is up for seven Oscars, including Best Picture. I gotta admit, I really love this film. The only thing I didn't like was the way they handled Tobey Maguire's character. Okay, he plays a jockey who's secretly blind in one eye. And the scene where he finally admits his uh, problem, his infirmity, should have been one of the most powerful moments in the film. Unfortunately, I think they trivialized it, and, uh, well, take a look. It's not my fault, not this time. I told you, look out for Rosemont. I thought I had it. You stopped riding. I couldn't see him. What the hell are you talking about? He was flying up your tail. Yeah, well, I can't. What? See out there. <laughs> How is that helping the movie? I don't. And that portion of the movie's in 3D. They have you put on glasses and the eyeball flies around and not cool, not cool, not cool. <laughs> All right, our, our next nominee is The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, the third installment of the epic. Hooray! Hooray! Yay! <laughs> I'm such a bastard. All right. The third installment of the epic trilogy. <laughs> People are happy. Why? Why do I hurt them? Uh, nominated for 11 Oscars, including Best Picture, but it's also up for Best Score. Now, I saw the movie. I really loved the film. Uh, I enjoyed it. But I have to say, I didn't think the score was that great. Some of the music in the film seemed just a little out of place and sort of fought the action. I'll show you what I'm talking about. How far is Ministeris? Three days ride, as the Nazgul flies. Here, something for the road. But we'll see each other soon. Don't we? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Mary. Branch head effects. Show us the meaning of haste. Mary! <laughs> Song, but not there. All right, and that goes on for 40 minutes, the running and the... Our next nominee is In America. Director Jim Sheridan co-wrote 
the nominated screenplay with his daughters Naomi and Kristen. It's about their own move from Ireland to New York City 20 years ago. A poignant scene in the uh, film shows the family's excitement as they drive through Times Square for the very first time. Now, I hate to criticize the performance of a child actor, but I'm sorry, these kids, they just seemed implausibly happy given the sights they were taking in. <laughs> See for yourself. I'm not buying it. All right, our next nominee is House of Sand and Fog. The powerful drama picked up three nominations, including a Best Actor nod for Ben Kingsley. Now, usually, if an actor wins, he thanks his co-stars for their support. But I gotta tell you something, if Kingsley wins, I'd be curious to see if he thanks anybody. Because his castmates, they seem to be less than helpful at times. They're really not helping him out in this movie. Check out these scenes, you'll see what I'm talking about. I can't expect you to just move in here and make money off of this. This is my house. I lived here and you stole this house from me, you son of a... Were you better in Gandhi? No. Everyone says you were better in Gandhi than you are in this. Everyone says that. And I rented it, and I think so too. And I look at your face, and all I see is Gandhi. Is that okay? Does that make you feel uncomfortable when I say you were better in Gandhi? You're used to getting Oscars, aren't you, Mr. Kingsley? What was that movie you won an Oscar for? About the Indian guy who didn't eat much. Remember that guy? Gandhi. I have more than one copy of Gandhi. When one gets worn out, I watch the new one. And you're always great in it. Better than you're ever gonna be in this. I suggest you start acting like Gandhi so I don't have to. He worked with these people. Better than Gandhi. All right, our final nominee is Master and Commander of the Far Side of the World. It's a movie that I have reviewed before, but we must mention it. The big budget nautical epic is up for 10 Oscars. It certainly deserves to win a few. But I wonder if the Academy will be bothered by all the historical inaccuracies in the film. Take the scene, for example, where Russell Crowe's ship comes under attack. Historically speaking, it's full of some errors, and uh, it bothered me. Take a look. It was only for a moment. I, I, I thought I saw a shape. Well, you did the right thing, Mr. Hollum. Go to your sessions. The deck's yours, Tom. Sir. Incredible. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, you gotta stick around tonight. Great show. When we come back, Barbara Walters is here.